as you may have seen on the agenda tonight, Tom's going to be giving a preliminary budget overview. Uh, this is something we did last year as well. It's an opportunity for residents to get a better understanding in terms of how their dollars are spent. Uh, we'll be posting this online as well and publicizing it on our social media channels as well. And uh, with that, we'll dim the lights and uh, turn it over to Tom. Greg, would you mind? Is that flag in the wire now? Okay. Best part. <laughs> Tom gets to speak. Mayor, this, this will be a brief uh, presentation. We're only going to uh, look at a preview draft of the appropriation side of the budget uh, as we uh, complete the annual financial statement and get certified uh, revenue figures. Then we can uh, put together the revenue side and, and blend it all together in a comprehensive package that ultimately you'll introduce. Uh, but tonight we're only going to touch on the appropriation side. Uh, this was the format that we followed last year. I think it worked pretty well so that we had uh, some budget discussions at more than just one meeting. And uh, all of you, obviously, are free to interrupt me at any point here if you have any questions as we go along. Um, the, the first slide here is the calculation of the appropriations cap. And again, for uh, people that aren't familiar with the process, appropriations are... Uh, is spending. It's authorizing the, the money to be spent. So the total general appropriations for 2015 was $14,513,814. From that, there are some deductions, which are called exceptions, $3,677,425. That's primarily debt service, uh, the contribution to the library, uh, some other things that are uh, actual appropriations that are outside the cap limit. So the amount on which the cap is applied is then reduced to $10,836,389. Um, again, for those who aren't familiar or don't remember, the state has, there are two different cap limitations that we deal with. One is the cap on the appropriation on how much money you're allowed to spend. The other is the levy cap, which is a cap on how much money you're allowed to tax. Uh, we'll, we won't get to that tonight. We'll talk about that at, probably at the next meeting. The uh, cost of living as certified by the state for 2015 was zero. So the built-in cap that, you're, uh, that we're dealing with is zero. So when you get down to the next line, the allowable operating appropriations, this is the inside the cap portion, is the same number as it was last year, 10836389 when you uh, do the budget each year, you're allowed to bank any amount of the cap that was available and unused. So in 2014, we did what's called a cap bank ordinance. There's one on your agenda tonight for introduction for 2016. And in 2014, there was $316,771 still available that could have been appropriated and wasn't. So that is the cap bank. And we will be using some of that cap bank from 2014 in the 2016 budget because of the 0% allowance. Uh, so the total allowable appropriations as it stands right now is $11,153,000. And that is $120,000, I'm rounding, but about $120,000 less than what would be permitted. So we're still you know, uh, well under where we are allowed to be. And we, if you recall, in 2015, we chose not to do a cap bank uh, ordinance. So there is no bank available from 2015. So the 2014 bank uh, of 316, we're using 120. The remainder would still be available to use in 2017 if needed and would lapse after that. And we are recommending a cap bank ordinance be adopted this year uh, to create bank uh, for future years in the event that it's needed. Any, any questions on that? It's a lot of numbers, and I know it gets a little confusing. But okay. This uh, next slide is a summary of the various categories where we spend our money. And under general government, we're looking at 1,949,000. That's... Uh, an increase of about $11,000 over last year, a uh, very small percentage increase. Health and welfare is virtually unchanged, about a $4,100 increase. Public safety, 
goes from uh, 3 million 128 to 3 million 190 an increase of just under 2% or $61,450 dpw total goes from 2 million 2000 to 2 million 15 again a very small uh, increase $13,000 which is uh, less than 1% 6 tenths of 1% uh, insurance increases $50,000, uh, an increase of just over 2%. Utilities are actually reduced thank, uh, thanks to lower energy costs and gasoline costs, so those are, are reduced by about $38,000. Uh, here is the uh, category that uh, is the largest increase in this year's budget besides debt service, and that is Social Security, Pension, and the Low SAP Award Program. Uh, pension costs are actually uh, the biggest chunk of this. Social Security is pretty flat, uh, but pension costs are increased. The total increase in this category is $109,205, and that is uh, just over 9.5%, with the, with the bulk of that being the increase in the pension costs. The contribution to the library is increased by 2.6%, or $26,000, and de debt service is increased by 12.2%, uh, uh, $114,868. That is primarily a result of increase in interest costs because we authorized more uh, capital improvements last year than what we normally do. If you recall, the, uh, the authorization in 2015 was $2.2 million, uh, which included a $1 million for the purchase of a new fire truck for the Green Village Fire Department. So we'll, we'll be looking at, um, you know, doing less capital improvements this year, probably closer to a uh, million dollars a year, uh, and we will not see such a large increase again uh, next year. Uh, and actually, uh, I am going to talk a little bit about the levy cap just to show you where we, where we stand. Uh, there is 2012 levy cap bank expiring of uh, over half a million dollars. Uh, 2013 levy bank still available of 366,000 to use this year. Uh, 2014 levy cap bank available of 423,000. 2015 levy cap bank of 654,000, and a total levy cap bank available and expired of just over two million dollars. And just so that everybody understands, what that means is cumulatively uh, since 2012. Uh, when the state imposed the mandatory 2% cap on the levy, uh, we could have levied an additional $2 million over that period of time that we did not. So uh, I think that, again, is testament to keeping a, a, a lid on things and uh, you know, taking a, a very conservative approach to the way we do stuff. So we, we will be obviously in good shape as it comes to the levy cap. We won't have any, any problem whatsoever. Uh, in meeting the state mandate on that. Uh, this is information on where your 2015 tax uh, dollars went, um, or more specifically, the, the total amounts levied for the various purposes. The uh, county taxes for Chatham Township were just over $8 million. County open space was 337000 So the total for the county was 8415000 School taxes, the, count, the township's portion of the school budget was $35,852,000. Tax for municipal purposes to fund all the municipal operations was $8,386,000. And municipal open space of $153,609,000 and the library tax of $1,015,000. So that, those are the taxes that were levied in 2015. And, uh, not to beat a dead horse, but as you know, the school gets about 67 cents out of every dollar. This is, I believe, going to be our last slide tonight. Just the highlights of the various categories. Total salaries and wages throughout the budget are increased by 23,000. That's 0.4 percent, less than half of a percent. Health insurance is increased by $50,000, which is a 2.5 percent increase. Employees' contribution towards health insurance increases $80,000 and is now up to $339,000. And all employees now are at the fourth year of the, of the four-year phase in. So we, we will not see a large increase in the employee contribution 
uh, in the future. Um, but they will, everybody who is contributing is going to be staying at the level of contribution where they are, or uh, if their income goes up and brings them up to a higher category, then their contribution would go, would go up. But uh, that 339, uh, approximately that amount is what we can count on collecting from the employees each year moving forward. And pension costs, as I mentioned earlier, increased 109,205 or 13%. Part of the reason that, that that is increased as much as it is is that last year there was actually, uh, state actually took action to reduce the employer's contribution, that is the, the township and the you know, various uh, jurisdictions around the state. Uh, and, and the way they did it, as I understand, part of the uh, pension reforms that were adopted back in 2010 included an increase in the employee's contribution rate. So the police, for example, were, were increased, I think, from 8.5% of their salary up to 10%, and the public employees were increased uh, in a seven-step uh, process with a, an incremental increase each July. Well, it was, it was expected, or I believe uh, anticipated, that the employee's increased contribution would actually go into the pension. Uh, it turns out it didn't. It was given back to the employers in the form of a reduced bill for the last year. Uh, so the, the last year's bill, 2015, I think was somewhat artificially low for the employers, and now uh, you see a 13% increase to get back on track. And capital improvements is not updated yet from last year. So we're still, we're still gathering our information uh, I'm expecting some uh, estimates from John Rushkey on where we're uh, going with our road and, road and drainage improvements for 2016 uh, to add to uh, what we still have uh, approved in 2015 that hasn't been completed yet. Uh, you'll recall that the, that the road improvement money included doing drainage and paving throughout uh, Wickham Woods. The drainage that was authorized, I think, is now completed, and we'll be doing the paving of those streets where uh, the drainage was already done. And we're looking now to go and do the, the remainder of that neighborhood and essentially do the same thing, do drainage uh, and paving. And we may or may not, depending on the overall numbers, look to budget it all in 2016. My guess at this point is that we'll probably recommend going forward with doing the drainage this year and the uh, paving next year uh, in order to spread out the cost. So uh, that's it. Great. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Tom, can you explain what is encompassed in health and welfare, if I might ask? Yeah, that's the, that's the Board of Health and uh, Animal Control primarily. Oh. Tom, if someone were to say you, you have to cut $80,000 from the budget, where would you look to, to cut? Well, I think the first thing I would do would be to cut the Township Committee salaries and eliminate those. Okay, so <laughs> now what do we do with the 79500 <laughs> You know, but Bob, it's an interesting question. The, there's really, and I, you know, it's going to sound like a cop-out, but there's really not a lot of place. How much are you looking for? What was the number? I threw out 80000 if you have to do it, you, someone come you said you just gotta you, you gotta find it. Just, I'm just curious as to where you would, where you would cut. I, I would squeeze all the operating expenses that all the departments have, you Such know, because as. that's that's really where it is. Road repairs, buildings and grounds. You know, you know you'd cut the police department. You'd cut you know ten or fifteen thousand, and they would have to live without something this year. That's that's really you know most of this is uh, insurance, for example, you're not changing that. You know, debt service, you're not changing it. It is what it is. It's already been pre-authorized. Um, pension, it, it is what it is. You're not going anywhere with that. So the, there's, you know, when I tell you that you have a lean budget, I, I think the numbers speak for themselves, that we are substantially under cap every year, both on the spending side and on the levy cap. We have, I believe, squeezed every nickel that we can. We've reduced the size of this government in the 15 years that I've been here. Every department is smaller than it used to be, and by substantial numbers. Public Works Department at one time had 35 employees. They now have 21. 
police department, I think, had 27 or 28. They're down to 21. Uh, the administrative offices, if you walk through here in the afternoon, you know, it's like a ghost town. We have a lot of people, one-person offices, that are doing the job that two or three people used to do. So there's only so much of that that you can do, and I think we've done it. I, I really do. You know, if we had to, if for some reason we were up against the cap and we could not, then then you're looking at probably laying people off. You know, because there's not that much in the operating expenses. There's not a lot of discretionary spending that goes on. You know, when, when police, when the public works department, you know, buys salt, it's because they need it, not just because they want it. Um, so that that's a long-winded answer to your question. But, you know, could it be done? Sure. Could it be done without consequences? I don't think so. Great. Thank you, Tom. Anyone else? Great. Thanks, Tom.